have my sniper rifle and it's all cleaned up, good to go, but I'm going to modify it to make it more to meet my goals, to be a cool kind of sniper rifle. So time for modifications, let's go. Here's this muzzle brake thing. Has a bunch of chip marks on it. Like paint chips and stuff, which doesn't look very good. So I've got this black nail polish, which I'm just going to give it a quick touch up. Okay, so it is a high gloss when the gun is all oiled. Um, it should all be gloss, so it will look, you won't even be able to tell. Okay, one of my goals with this rifle, it didn't have the AccuTrigger, so I was going to modify the trigger to make it a bit better. But it looks like the previous owner, or someone, one of the previous owners has already done this. So I think in the stock one, there should be a screw in here, which increases the trigger weight. It looks like they've just completely taken that out to make it lighter. And they have put in this shim right here, this shiny bit you're seeing along here. And what that does is it reduces the trigger travel. Um, so I'll take it off safe. And then so what will happen is when the rifle is cocked, there'll be pressure pushing down on this. And then when you pull the trigger, it moves that back and then this will drop and that will, then the rifle will fire. But you can see how little movement it takes. Very lightweight and sensitive trigger. So because that has already been done, I'm not going to worry about touching it. I'll just give it a good cleaning and then it should be good. Also while looking at the rifle, you can just see in there, it says Savage Mark II 20 MOA. So that's the scope, um, that's the scope base. So that's good news. If I want to do some more longer distance shooting, it will give me 20 more minutes of angle. That should allow me to extend this small caliber out to longer range, which again, I would I think um, this alone is about $120, and I would have really liked it. I probably wouldn't have got it if it didn't have it already, but the fact that it does is a massive bonus. Okay, so the rifle looks pretty cool as it is, but what I'm thinking is it's winter outside now, and uh, I quite like the look of like the Arctic rifles. So, because the stock is, it's not perfect, it has a few scuffs here and there, I am going to paint it white to have like more of an arctic looking sniper. So it should look really sick, but I am just going to tape off um, the inside and the stock first. <laughs> Okay, the taping doesn't have to be perfect on the inside because it's just to stop like an excessive build-up so the action still goes in nicely. So just a little bit of tape on the inside to prevent build-up. The back, the line has to be quite good along here, which I think I did a good job. It's a little bit at the bottom, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. It's ready to go. I might have to do this and paint it in the garage. And this should be good. It says it, it bonds to plastic. I'm in my uber messy garage. I don't have a lot of space, so I'm just doing it in the back corner. But that should be fine. I am just going to do one side, let it dry, then flip it around and do the other. Okay, that's coat number one. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so this is three days later. I just took the tape off. And unfortunately, because I painted it in the garage where it was really cold, the paint didn't dry properly. So I've been having to use the heat gun to, um, to try and help it dry. But it's still a bit sticky to the touch. So I'm just going to keep heating it with a heat gun periodically. And then um, it is getting better. Hopefully in a few more days it will be dry. It's so much, so much harder doing it in winter. So we are another week later from the last video. The stock is still a little bit tacky, but it's much better than it was. I suspect it might need some UV light on it or something to fully cure it. But um, yeah, so I bolted the rifle together. Um, the action and everything, super clean, all ready to go. 
the stock is all good. The only thing left for me to do is to adjust the scope for the, um, you know, if I want to have it further back or forward or whatnot. Okay, so I'm just checking the how square the scope is. And if you look down the site, you can see it lines up with the baseboard perfectly. So I think it's nice and flat. You can also see the reticle I have on this, which has no dot markings, which shouldn't be an issue. Because usually when I go shooting, <clears throat> for my holdover, I use the size of the target. So say I'm using a 10 inch target and I'm shooting like 8 inches, I have to aim 8 inches high. I'll just aim basically almost one target high, so that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so the scope seems a bit too far forward, so I'm going to loosen up these rings and pull it back a few a few places. Also, this top rail, I'm just going to double check the bolts, make sure they're nice and tight, because otherwise my point of aim will be, ju will be um, flying around all over the target, and I won't know why if it's a bit loose. Okay, so this scope has a pretty good eye relief, so the distance your eye needs to be from the scope, but even still, I adjusted it, moving it back a bit to make it a bit better for me. Uh, the rifle is good to go. Next thing will be zeroing it at the range. So I'll see you then.